something embarrassing happened to me like two weeks ago. I actually had my first dream as an avatar like, and I could not wait to like come to work the next day and tell everybody because it's like I am officially in the metaverse even in my subconscious like I knew I was an avatar in my dream but I was like you know I'm doing my work and I'm my avatar like in my dream yeah. so yeah that's really cool yeah it's metaverse. official like did I have, you know you were dreaming well when I woke up I just started laughing I was like I, it's happened <laughs> Like it, it's official like I'm in deep oh yes gosh. now I knew like no I didn't know I was dreaming but I knew I wasn't my avatar I knew I was still a real person so I hadn't gone that final step of just being code this is your reality yeah. just being code I'm all <laughs> yeah it's messed That's up so isn't funny. it so don't wait. quote me on that <laughs> just for our listeners going back like what for like layman's terms what is the metaverse like where is the future going and that whole and what does world? accenture do yes like share that with our listeners yeah. first Give before the whole we background. start that was like 20 different questions ah! <laughs> it was not one question well why don't you go first Dan? yeah so so we think of the metaverse as this kind of next evolution of the internet and of computing right that lets us go someplace virtually Right, or bring something virtual into the physical places that we are um, and own those goods that are in those places. You see a lot of this in the news with Web3 and NFTs and people buying digital things and trading digital things. Um, and those two concepts are really powerful, right? And so one of the things that Accenture is doing, right, which Andy's one of our key leaders for, is right, giving our people, employees, virtual places to go to. Um, and those places have a purpose, you know, if you want to share a little bit about that. Yeah, so we call the metaverse at Accenture the end floor. And that is where we can go to work, to collaborate, to play. So we spend part of our day in virtual reality working with each other. And so That's Carly, so cool. yeah. What so does cool. that mean exactly? Yeah. Does everyone put on yeah. Like, do that? Yeah. So um, Carly works out of Texas. I'm local here to St. Pete. We're on the same team. Actually, this is the first week I've actually met Carly yeah. in real life. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I feel like I know her and I've been in the same space as her because we have the opportunity to join meetings together. We can collaborate. Carly's got her own house so we can go and sit on the couch. There's a place where we can play basketball yeah. and just chill out. Um, but we also can just plan a meeting and go work and having spaces that are different than like staring at her picture which right. is just a camera and giving us an opportunity to have presence with each other is really powerful. And I don't expect that we're ever going to all be in the same location ever again. So finding new ways to work so we can feel like we know each other and can be with each other is really important. So when we talk about the end floor, the concept was like when you go into a physical office and you go to the elevator, right? And you see all of the numbers that, that you could push. What if there was a letter N as one of the numbers in your elevator that took you someplace above your physical office where everybody in any Accenture office around the globe um, could attend the same space together? And that was what bore the concept of the end floor, right? This virtual office that sits above all of the physical places. Mm -hmm. And then if we had that, right, we can get water cooler conversations we could never have before. I remember during the pandemic, uh, one, uh, one of our counterparts based out of India who leads a lot of rollout of the program, it was right when India was going through the COVID acceleration that they had and his father um, was in the hospital. He was trying to figure out how to get him extra oxygen. And we had this kind of, you know, much more than a water cooler connection, but something we never would have had on a team's call with 15 other people around. It was because we were both able to walk to the corner and have this one-to-one -one conversation that, you know, like we would have had in a real place in real life, but it was virtual. Um, and it was, it, it spawned these kind of amazing connections amongst our employees that we just wouldn't get on Teams or a Zoom call. Yeah, that's so I'm, crazy. I'm trying to picture it. Do you have the virtual reality glasses on? Is that a stupid question? We can do 3D uh -huh. and we can do 2D. Uh, which is really important. You want to talk about Carly? Yeah, yeah. So, and a lot of people think metaverse, right, is only you put on a headset, right? And and that's when we always get the questions, well, I'm not going to be spending my day wearing a headset all the time. And that's not the case, right? And one thing that is really important to us is being able to access these worlds in different ways, like on your laptop or on your tablet or on your phone. And some of those things we can do today, some of those things we're, we're working towards, but um, this world and floor that we're talking about, anyone can access that if they have a laptop. So you don't 
don't have to be totally immersed in a headset because what we also know is the headset as it stands right now, so it not it's not for everybody at this moment, right? We, people do report, you know, motion sickness or um, it, it, vertigo, things like that. And so um, giving people different ways to access the metaverse and interact um, in, on the end floor is really important to us. And we know that the technology and the devices will change too. I mean, what they are today um, was way different than even were a year ago. And then a year from now, we're going to look back and think, wow, how are those devices like that? So and we're doing things besides or beyond just the end floor, right? We're also using it for learning and for onboarding of new employees. So um, I'm relatively new to Accenture. Had I joined three or four years ago, I would have gone to an office and had a great onboarding experience and been able to get to know my colleagues. Um, and now you do that with an on new joiner onboarding program uh, in in all space. So that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Because as again, we, we hire thousands and thousands of people, tens of thousands of people a year. And, but what we don't have quite yet, right. Is, is a campus that everyone goes to and trains and, and can meet one another. But so we've created this virtual campus and enabled them to onboard together um, on day one. So we had as actually an, an alumni of ours had just pinged me on LinkedIn yesterday. He said, Dan, I saw the article in Forbes about what Accenture is doing. <laughs> did you replace the Q Center? And so the Q Center was our physical training location in St. Charles, Illinois. And when you started Accenture, you would fly to the Q Center no matter where you were in the world, right? So that was when you first had that aha moment of, well, it's not all the US. There's people here from London and there's people here from Singapore and, and you got to meet these other people and it was a special mixing. And he, he just pinged me and said, Dan, did you just replace the Q Center? Is that what, <laughs> what Accenture did? And I said, I like to think we reimagined yeah. right, what that could be like so that we get the best of that experience mm -hmm. without the carbon impact of flying across the world, right. without the life impact of making people move for two or three weeks to go back and the logistical impact but we can have all those same yeah. sorts of experiences, which is really powerful. That and it's is not just powerful. an Accenture problem, right? This is an yeah. everyone problem. Right. Absolutely. Right. Obviously, we we hire a lot of people. So we were on the leading edge of trying to solve these problems, but our clients are, are facing the same challenges. Yes. And it's, you know, give a real simple use case. So I'm flying to a conference next week and we're going to have a bunch of virtual reality demos. And um, we we created a replica of the physical space we're going to. And then we put in the virtual reality headsets and the posters and the booths so that us as 15 presenters, right? We've been meeting in VR to practice Ooh. how we're gonna walk people through this experience in VR, in VR wow. so that we don't have to show up seven days early to drive around and set it up. We can all now show up the day before because we practiced it already, right? And it's a simple example, but really powerful when you think about you know, big presentations, board meetings, you know, conferences, like what if you could do those things and not have to be physically present or to just practice the things that you will be physically present for? That's huge. Yeah. Yeah. But one other thing we work, we're working on too and, and are using is the digital twin. So you, we have our office up at the Raymond James um, building, at, sorry, Franklin Templeton building, uh, and it's a new office. And during um, the pandemic, they closed down the office and they did renovations, but we built the digital twin of the new office before we started construction so that we could design the office, tweak it, know what it was gonna look like. And then we were able to, to build the construction. The other thing we were able to use it for was we invited our Tampa employees to tour the office before we actually opened the office. So That's I had cool. been in the office meeting with people collaborating before I even went to the physical office, which was pretty cool. That's amazing. And the physical office was the same as same. the same. VR office. Same. That's same really plants, cool. same furniture, same mural that got painted from a local mm -hmm. artist. Wow. Same. So does Accenture help or does, does Accenture create this technology that other companies can use and implement in their internal environment? Yes. I mean, our focus tends to be, right, we view this as a transformational new set of technologies, right? To help companies understand how it can be valuable, why it would be valuable, and then what they should do to get value from it over time. And so we'll spend a lot of time, you know, just as, as we talked about, we're using it for learning. Well, what learning does your company need and how does that translate 
into these new technologies and what's the business case to do that so that you can you know, do this for value, not because it's fun and innovative, and it is fun and innovative, sure is. right? But we wouldn't be doing it if it stopped there, right? It has to actually deliver real value. It has to make our employees better at what they do. It has to make our customers happier. We have customers like ESPN, where we have co-innovation spaces in the metaverse together, right? So we said, hey, as an innovation partner, what if we could do innovation without a physical innovation lab, right? What would it mean to have a virtual only lab and how would we use that? And so we meet with them inside of the metaverse together, sometimes in headsets, sometimes not. They bring athletes in, they bring sports catchers in. Um, you know, think about, you know, they said one of the things we're most proud of is um, the, I think they called it the pylon cam, right? And the camera that kind of follows overhead, right? That was one of their sports innovations for broadcasting, right? right? So if you have this idea, right, you can actually build it virtually before you even physically know how to string the camera together. And so you can go in there and they show you the pylon cam and they talk to you about how they invented that. But then they show you the next set of innovations that they want to do next so that, you know, all stakeholders in the ecosystem can come in, can weigh in, can give ideas, can iterate together. And you never could have done that physically. You wouldn't have got everybody together. But virtually, you can have these events and get that feedback you wouldn't have otherwise. That's OK. First of all, you just threw in, oh, this client that we have, ESPN, like, <laughs> like nobody knows ESPN. That was hilarious. Um, but this is really cool because it's like you can you don't have to build a prototype in real life, right? You build it virtually. We call it future yeah. casting, That's right? Really so I'm cool. gonna, I wanna, I wanna design what I want the future to be. And it's something we say, we say about the metaverse today is, you know, we all live in a world right now, um, our businesses are designed for, for how things work today. Um, and one of the opportunities of the metaverse is to lean in, right? Or you're gonna find yourselves operating in a world designed and built by somebody else. Right? And so here's that opportunity to design and build what you want the future to look like, to test it out uh, virtually right before you deploy these things physically. And that's that's really exciting. Yeah. And part of it, too, is it it doesn't take in months or even years to do. Right. I mean, these are imagined spaces. In some cases, we can build these spaces in a couple of days, you really? know, depending on what it is. And so that's the difference. I mean, that's really when we accelerate the imagination and, and going from brick and mortar to what does a virtual space, virtual world look like? Right. So, cool. so when everyone's meeting in VR or the nth floor, nth floor, is that what you guys call it? Mm -hmm. How do you appear in VR? Like, how do you, how do you create yourself? Is it like, you know, going on and doing like the whole, will you, appear yeah. as your authentic self Avatar, right yeah. however you want to oh, design it oh, okay um, so today it is a little cartoony if you see it right, right. Um, but you can pick your face and your body shape and your hair color and your clothes and in fact we toured some schools this week and we went dressed in real life as our yeah, avatars really? yeah it was That's so cool. fun yeah so uh, unfortunately i had picked a purple flannel shirt <laughs> oh in yeah florida. So you go a purple flannel well, i had to buy one and then i had to wear it in florida for right. three for straight three days, days. Oh. yes <laughs> right. anyway so but yes you design your avatar we know that there's a lot coming with avatars and they'll be more photorealistic. Mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to like eye tracking and facial expressions oh, right? because like when I'm meeting with Carly in the end floor, she has a giant smile, <laughs> even when she's really upset with me. Aww. So I look forward to being able to like see her expressions and her eye movement right. and be able to have those, you know, read the body language, yes. which we can't quite do yet. It's actually funny in that that setting up your avatar is one of the things that new users have the hardest time with, right? right? So we've had, we actually, as part of our um, kind of VIP services, we help people the first time configure their avatar, right? So they're not trying to do it on their own because we've had people say, I don't, I don't want to go in there. I'm not comfortable with what I look like. <laughs> yeah. Right. And, and you can think about it all the time we spend prepping what outfits we're going to wear in the morning, yes. right? How we want to do our hair. Um, you know, that same sort of anxiety exists for your virtual person. And so we want to make sure that people are comfortable with however they choose to present themselves. And then sometimes you get those little extra flair. Like we have a colleague, John, whose hair is purple. It's not purple in no. real life. It is in there. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, it's kind of one of those things of, you know, people felt self-conscious if they didn't feel comfortable with the way they looked virtually. Yeah. And then they yeah. couldn't interact because the whole time they're like, this doesn't look like me, right. right? I'm not comfortable with this. And so that whole, 
that whole social portion, yeah. right? You're going to see right. that carry over into all of these platforms. The first time I saw my avatar, so I designed my avatar and I thought, okay, that's pretty close. And I went into the end floor and there's a mirror there. So you can no, see, you it. can see. Oh, yeah. And then I was like, that, well, that doesn't look like yeah. right. And then I had this like long skirt on, which I would never wear a long skirt in real life. And right. I was like, why am I even wearing? And I had black gloves. Like, I don't know what. <laughs> so I went back in, I failed and redesigned it. That's so, right. yeah. Wow. So you mentioned Dan a lot about you know being comfortable. That is one of that is one of the things like we think about change, right? As people start to explore this new technology, I mean it's it's rooted in gaming reality, yeah. right? Like our generation, our kids, they got it. I mean, when we went right. to the middle schools and we hand an Oculus, had they never had one before or held one before, oh, they got it immediately. Right. But if you are not a gamer getting used yes. to holding, right? Un, you know, experiencing a totally immersive mm -hmm. environment, it's, it's rattling, you know, and, it, and it, it does make you a little bit uncomfortable. You question, you know, I can't tell you how many times we work to enable some of our Accenture people and they say, this might be a stupid question or this might be a dumb question um, because people just aren't comfortable with it. And also the technology just isn't quite there, right? right. Like now when we get um, an iPhone, it's something we can kind of expect what the next generation is going to look like. But this is the first generation of it for most people. It made me think of, I remember when my son was was six and I had a TV that was low and I think like CNBC was on or one of the news channels with the, the slide, you know, the sliding newsreel yeah, yes. underneath. And he walked up to it and he tried to like slide because <laughs> <his screen, laughs> he thought of it like a big iPad. Yeah, yeah. Um, everything's touch You know, but <laughs> we've, we've learned through this, you know, it all of our employees are able to learn how to use these devices. It doesn't matter where they came from, it doesn't matter how old they are. You know, people saying, ah, you know, I got sick after five minutes and now I'm spending 45 minutes in it and it's not a problem. And so it's a new type of learned behavior. Right. You know, it comes easier to sort of some of that digitally native gaming, but that doesn't mean it is only for them. We've learned that it can be accessible by all. And I always tell the joke when we when we show people some of this for the first time, if you've seen Back to the Future, yes. right? And Marty Mark Fly goes on stage and he plays rock music yes. to his parents' prom. Yeah. And rock music hadn't been invented yet. Remember this? And they they look at Marty like horrified when he's done, right? He's kicking the speakers over. <laughs> um, and he says, oh, you know, you may not be ready for this yet, but your kids are gonna love it. <laughs> and yeah. I had a executive for a retailer in it, and he took it off. He said, Dan, I feel I feel a little dizzy. Can people really do this? And as he's saying this, his son clearly walks into his office and says, dad, can I have the Oculus? <laughs> and he goes, yeah, I'm done with it. And I said, well, did your son get sick? He's like, no, my son was in it for six hours. Last night. <laughs> six hours I'm like, geez. is your son the type of customer? Or will he be your customer right. soon? Oh, well, well, yeah. I said, well, so even if we have problems, right, yeah. you know, this is a new form factor that people are getting accustomed to and they're going to use, um, you know, and people you know, like what we're doing with our change, right? And how we help our clients is to think through how do we help your employees do this successfully and feel comfortable um, so that it's not, not a scary thing far away, but the change management aspect of this, something we think we can add a lot of value to because we've done it internally and are committed to as a company to figuring out how to do this. Okay, random question. As I'm trying to visualize this in our world, do you guys have an office where you have the Oculus stuff set up. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm seeing head nods. Yes. Yeah. Right. Well, I think we all have an Oculus in our office. And like it's not your desk. It's like a room. A room. Oh no. Oh. It's at our desk. Oh. Yes. Okay. So yes. you have like your laptop set up, you have your screens. And I you have, have my Oculus. cell phone. Uh -huh. I have my laptop. Uh -huh. I have probably my iPad there, yeah. my coffee. And my <laughs> but we have also, so we, we've launched recently and we're launching more what we call metaverse studios, right? If we want to do two things with those, it's a place for our, our customers and our clients to come in and try it, right? So, you know, dedicated space in those innovation hubs where it is set up so that you can come learn about it. You can immerse yourself in it. Cause I, I see you two closing your eyes going, I'm trying to I'm envision trying to what that would be it. like. Yeah, yeah, what sure. would that really be like? And it's yeah. kind of those things we say, you have to choose to learn and educate. Right. Yes. And we want to help you learn and educate in our spaces. Right. And then the second is we want to invite the public in to some of these because it is new and our clients need to test and learn. There is no proven playbook, right? There is no proven these are the acceptable standards for how you do this. And so how do we engage and test 
so that what we do is responsible and it's accessible and it gets feedback from lots of different people to help determine, right, what is going to be a valuable set of experiences to offer. Right, because I mean, you would think that as a as an organization who has remote employees, they would want to implement this, right, so they can have prop, uh, at least better onboarding, right, than just virtual what we have more now, interaction. And more interaction, mm -hmm. but also it needs to be secure, which I'm sure you're dealing with too, right? Like you don't want other organizations coming in or other random people who aren't a part of your organization kind of coming into your end floor. So I'm sure you guys have that sort of cybersecurity piece yeah, to I mean, it. Yeah, I mean, it's evolving. We had joked early on about, you know, because when we stood this up, we had a, a lot of clients say, well, can I come see it? And they're like, well, we don't have a security guard in the metaverse yet. Yeah. Right? You think about in your physical space, there's a security officer at the front and they sign you in and right. they check your ID and they call for you to come get them. Like, we haven't quite figured out how to do that yet. So yeah. you need to be an Accenture ID to get in. Right. So we came back to Microsoft and said, hey, it's not just for us. We also mm -hmm. need to be able to let- We need a visitor. You know, what's the visitor pass? <laughs> like right? you need a big visitor yeah. on your- right? uh, Or if I want to do an thing. interview. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And so, you know, with, with the University of Michigan, we're talking about, hey, maybe let's do a recruiting event, right? Where you can come see our, our offices without people traveling to them right. Right. that might want to work there. And so we're going to need private spaces and we're going to need public right. spaces right. and we're going to need visitor spaces. And right, how does that all evolve over time? Um, you know, is, is definitely a requirement for this to be more pervasive. That's so cool. I guess Love final it. question. Do you think that this will replace the human interaction? Ooh. So I'll start yeah. and then maybe yeah, you can please, share from a change. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't definitely don't view it as a replace. And I especially would say um, it's not a replacement for human interaction because we are interacting with humans right. in there. Right, so um, face to face. But we view it as an is an augmenting or an extending of what our experience is, right? And a way we can ex have experiences with other when we can't be physically together. And sometimes those experiences are better because we can do things and look at data that we could never do if we were in a physical place. Um, and then there's other places like this event on here where it's great to get together and actually connect with people one to one. And so it becomes another option for us to to offer. And I, Dan, that's spot on. I mean, for me, the way I like to answer this is it's an enhancement of our world of what we do today. What are the things that we might not be able to do? And how can the metaverse, how can the virtual reality, extended reality, whatever it might be, enhance what we need and want to do today? So we talked a lot about onboarding and connection, collaboration with our people. We talked a little bit about training and immersive learning. Um, what we do know is that um, learning, total immersive learning, it's a, a much higher retention rate, um, which means you, you get to train less and retain more. So I think everybody loves that, right? Mm -hmm. One, one thing we didn't get a chance to talk about was wellness and how we use wellness um, in, you know, with this whole move to, um, we talk about the war for talent, right? Retention and holding on to employees is really important, but it's also um, how employees bring their whole self to work and how companies support the whole self. So a lot of companies are moving to this um, wellness aspect and making an investment there. And that's, that's another piece that we have seen enhancing what we can do for, for our employees. And that is um, working out in VR, that is meditation in VR. I know there's an app I have where I can sit at the base of the pyramids and I just sit Whoa. and yeah. I am walked nice and meditation. Point. Yeah. So I don't know if you have anything you'd like I to just, add there. I guess I'll just sum it up and, and Dan kind of where Dan started. It's a continuum, right? There's no grand opening of the metaverse. It's here. Um, but it's going to evolve over time. And we believe that VR is that kind of that next step to AR, augmented reality. And that's what will protect us from just putting on our VR goggles and being a ready player one, if you've read that book and like never interacting with a human ever again. So mm -hmm. it's a continuum and uh, we'll continue to go on the journey with it. Love it. And side note, Carly, from what you were saying, sitting on the base of the pyramids, meditating, that's what I was thinking. Like, can we just create different countries and go there yeah. and I see it that. and travel? They're that's already a, there. That's oh, really they're cool. already there. They're yeah. already there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's do a girls trip. Let's do a girls trip. <laughs> we are <Bali>. girls trip. <laughs> I love it. Thank you Thank guys, you guys so, much. so much. Thank this you. It's been great. Yes.